Sam. Sir. One of our most controversial topics is happening, which is we're going to seal up this engine block, right? That's right. I should have worn orange today. That would have been cool. Yeah, I use the brush and the rag if I get too much. If I don't have enough, I just put a little dab on the end of the brush. You gotta pay attention, watch out for little hairs. These little acid brushes tend to shed. Sweet. Now it's time for sewing class. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my glasses for this one. What do you think? Which pair of glasses are you gonna use? I'm gonna go retro. Retro. Yeah, because these are not my bifocals. I'm old, right? So I need bifocals. These are just like regular old. I didn't say you're old, I said you were classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually, you did, you did say I was old the other day. Old school feels you. What are you trying to say? You're a classic. You're not that old. Oh, one. thanks, pal. <laughs> I said we're classic. No, you said old. <laughs> that, that's that's like that's like telling that's like telling your wife she's plump. You know what I mean? Like it's come on, bro. <laughs> it only means one thing. No, oh, that fan. That fan's kicking my ass. Kicking my ass. One so time I did this and I had like an inch too short a thread. That's hilarious. What, what is the significance of the thread? It's an old aircraft trick for, uh, Jesus Christ, let me turn this fan on. There we go. Oh my God, that was horrible. It's an old aircraft building technique for engines. I don't know if it's part of their procedure, but I know that it's very prevalent in that field and it's something that we use. I've been doing this I wouldn't say a very long time, but I've been doing this long enough to have enough motors on the street that uh, have never leaked. I mean, don't get me wrong, they leak, but they don't leak from the case, which is the hardest, the hardest part. So all it does is it, you know, the sealant is what seals it, and it's just like an extra extra layer of security that doesn't hurt anything. You know, it's not detrimental to any kind of bearing clearances or any of that stuff. There's no bearing clearance out here. Bearing clearances are right here. So it doesn't hurt, it only helps. So we'll pick about the right length we need for there. There's that. So then we just have this little piece left, right? All right, cool. That'd be hilarious. I'd start all over. <laughs> so Don, while you're while you're here, while I'm here wasting time, while you're here doing nothing, that's what I do best. Supervising. I walk around and make it look like I'm busy. Yeah. Can you supervise me? Absolutely. Come on, bro. I remember my first time. Come on, bro. No, come on, I remember the bro. the first time I built a motor. I know. It, it was today. It was a flat, it was a flat six. Was it? Yeah. A flat one? Yeah. Well, in line, but it's they're still hard flat. To go, it's hard to go down when you got your fucking... Ham in the way? Yeah, when you got your hand Nothing's in Nothing's touching way. my hands yet. Okay. Oh, it's this stud right here. Uh, right here. Turn it toward you a little bit more. Got it. Right there. there we go. Ready? Yep. No, no. That's fine, that's fine. No, this O-ring came it's, up. What O-ring? From your hand? Yeah. Nice. All right, got them both back in there. Nice. Now, string's still intact. You didn't You didn't screw anything up? I don't think so. Really? Well, you got a little bit on my knuckles here. No, the string is did not get touched. Perfect. So, what we want to do. All right, perfect. Thank you, sir. All right, so now we're sealed. 
Thank you. All right, so let's talk about a somewhat controversial subject. So the so Sam, the comment section is very active with saying that I put my studs in the wrong way. So Porsche, when the when the engine comes from the factory, the bolt is here, down, and the nuts on the bottom. We have two problems with that. One is that's a pain in the butt for me. The, this case sits down on top of that one. That one holds the crankshaft and everything, right? So in order for me to do this, I have to basically work upside down and I have sealant drying. So basically what I do is I take this, I stick it in the hole, right? And then I put my O-ring on, my little jig. I hold that down. Now my nuts held in place and I'm hands-free. So then I can just go like this and put my little acorn nut on. And this is significantly easier for me to do at a high level one-handed. That's how, that's the reason that we do it. Now I know Porsche did it a different way, but Porsche also put plastic coolant lines in epoxy coolant lines in 996s and turbos and stuff like that. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but that's how we do it. And that's the reason that we put our studs this way. One-handed operation, it's much easier to do it and a lot more efficient use of time. So one thing here, if you notice, Sam, if you notice on the, if you take the camera right here, if you notice here, I've got a gap, right? Right. So the reason I do that is I set it up and I leave it sitting on top of the dowels and I don't slam it home yet. The number one reason for that is that stuff can, that, that ceiling can sit in an open air environment till lunchtime, you know, it, it, can be, it can sit there for hours, possibly even days, who knows. Once that surface, once that surface gets pressure on it, you know, in, in the absence of oxygen, I guess you could say also, once that happens, then it immediately starts to harden. So for me, I'm pretty picky about you know how I do things. I like to get, these are the first torques, the center out, you torque it from the center out. So basically what I like to do is I like to get that stuff, all these nuts and O-rings and everything set, then I'll slam it, torque all of this and torque everything at the same time. And that stuff hasn't hardened yet. So that's really the reason that we do it. Could be the right way, could be the wrong way, but in my head, it makes sense to uh, torque everything before it hardens. That's why we do it. I hate it when my hands get so oily. I can't grab anything. This little, this finished hardware looks so good, doesn't it? I really love it. Feels kind of aircrafty. It does. I just don't think this car is gonna fly. You know, it might fly down the block. I don't think it's gonna take off. We don't want that repeat of, uh, was it Le Mans where oh, that Cadillac? one car? It was a Cadillac, wasn't it? I think it was a Mercedes. Oh, Mercedes, that's right. All of a sudden. It happened at Road, it happened at Road Atlanta, too. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. One of, them, uh, one of them went airborne at Road Atlanta. I don't remember when. It was. I don't think it was the same year. And then I, I think what they ended up doing was I think they took that car. I think they took that car out of racing. I don't think it raced anymore. Yeah, it happened on the back straight at Road Atlanta. Don't know what year. That's a fun course. Donald. I, I'm just making sure you don't need professional supervision yeah. do you feel like my hat today uh every day every, every day every day <laughs> <laughs> i i came in this morning and, and david saw my head he goes what is that i was like it's care bears i thought he was gonna lose his mind <laughs> he probably has a few at home on his bed i guarantee you as much as he busted my balls i guarantee you he's got the full collection of yeah. care bears yeah. we should go ask him that i guarantee you he does so, oh, Dave, we heard you got the full collection of Care Bears at the house. <laughs> <laughs> He'll correct. He's like, no, I'm a, I'm a My Little Pony guy. <laughs> I guarantee you he does. Not even a question in my mind. <laughs> You're back there. <laughs> uh, welcome to Chicago. No chance to bust somebody's balls ever. It never gets passed up. Ever. That's definitely a Chicago thing. All right, then we'll push this guy back. And then we're gonna grab a hammer. Oh, wrong drawer. We're gonna grab a hammer and then we'll send this guy. Now we gotta work fast. 
fast. Now we gotta work fast. I didn't catch it, the engine caught it. Good catch to the engine. I actually have dropped stuff in there before. I dropped circ clips. Luckily with these engines is there's a lot of room in there. And there's a lot of places to get in there and find things. So it's usually, it's usually not an issue. I, I confirmed it with Dave. He, not only does he have the Care Bear, but he also has the Cabbage Patch doll. Come on. Oh. Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have all of the Cabbage Patch dolls. Dude, that's, that's pretty. Hat, dude. You like my hat today? I want to know where you found it. Where do you find that? At the airport. I was at, uh, <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I was actually at some little tchotchke score at the airport and uh, they had it and I'm like, bro, I'm wearing that to work tomorrow. But you know, like it was on sale too because I think it was like the middle of July. So I've literally been waiting till today when it was a little colder out so I could wear it. I love it. So I'm not running this down like, you know, with the gun. I'm just speeding up my process a little bit. I'm not running it to its full capacity. And then here I'm using this uh, FDX socket on my gun because it grabs the hardware a little harder a little tighter, a little bit more tighter tolerance, and it doesn't mar up the fastener. Whereas a looser one will. I think we can turn our fan back on, right? Our big guy fan? It's true, I'm ready for it. You see, we need the fan, because that fit is hot. Look at that, Jordan's camo pants, love it. So now it's torque time, and these go 35 newton meters starting from the center out. Tim, with winter coming around the corner, are you are you like a snow expedition kind of guy? Skiing, I love snowboarding? It. I am. I don't know. I don't do snowboarding or skiing. I don't do anything that can hurt me. In, in my line of work, broken hands and legs and backs and stuff are very costly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun, but I avoid that shit like to play. That's why I don't do any kind of uh, go-karting or any of that stuff. Like some of the guys at work are always like, let's go go-karting. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna set myself up for one of my employees to put me into the wall and break my back. He just you knows know, just he because I Stop said- Stop getting reasons to put you into the wall. Yeah, just right. saying I said the wrong god thing to him one day, you know? <laughs> Get him back today. No, I don't do anything that can put my body in jeopardy. I just feel like you're afraid one of us is gonna be way faster. Well, that too. I'm too competitive <laughs> for that. Yeah, I'm way too competitive for that. It would probably end up being you. You're the biggest guy in the. You're the biggest guy in the room. So it probably end up being you. You'd be the fastest. Exactly. The big guys you gotta watch out for. Me and Eddie G. Yeah. Yep. It's always the big guys. I already did that one. We're gonna grab our washers. Make sure we put them on the right way. Are you a go-kart guy or a snowboard guy? Um, I mean, I love go-karting. I do ski though. The last time I tried snowboarding, it was a disaster. You should, uh, for go-karting, you should go up against Patrick. I bet you could beat Patrick. Pat's Guaranteed. pretty serious, isn't he? He's a national champ. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. That's that's serious. In lay down. Like the where you lay down flat in the cart. Ooh. I'm surprised a guy can even sit down the size of his cojones. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm I'm very surprised. See the guys I can't believe are like the late model stock guys or the you know dirt oval guys. Out yeah. of their minds. Yeah. Like the chili bowl that race. I don't know what that is, but it sounds crazy. It's a race out in Oklahoma where they actually race inside of a convention building. Tiny little track, all these little, like, basically these dirt go-karts. 
Okay. Madness. They're all, you know, wheel to wheel, drifting the whole way around, darts flying everywhere. Really? About to show you that. Granted, I don't think anyone's more crazy than rally drivers. Best in the world. In my opinion, they're the best in the world. It's hard to argue when you, you see how fast they go through forests. It's like they have no fear. They truly don't. <laughs> you know? I mean, can you imagine going through the Starbucks drive through at like 95? That's yeah. That's essentially what they do. It's stupid. And the other guy in the seat's like, oh, yeah, you'll go left soon. Oh, then right. Yeah. In third gear, flat out. <laughs> left. So I'm very anal. You're anal about your nuts? Now that you mentioned, I mean, if you put it that way, no. But <laughs> am I anal about my hardware? Yes. <laughs> All right, send these guys. I forgot to tighten this one. So I'm not gonna do this in a star pattern because it's already tight. <laughs> you know, like it's already clutched at nine, so it's already 80% of the way, except for the one we forgot. That's why we have power tools. So I'm just gonna go down in the roll here. See that squish coming out? Look at it over here, it's almost perfect. For the haters that say that's way too much squish. Your oil galleys are going to be destroyed. All right, so let's get some really good around of that. Time for... Yeah, inside here, that's what you would have in terms of squish in your crankshaft area, which is nothing. And then I'm pretty anal and picky, so I like to come through here and clean all this off. Although the orange does look kind of cute up against the silver, right? I like it. It's a good color. Good shade of orange. A line eye esque. Done.